What is going on, guys? I am Peter Jennings. I go by CSU Ram 88 across the daily fantasy industry. I'm also a DraftKings analyst. And today we are going to be doing a lineup review on DKTV. We're first going to be looking at uh, the qualifier here for the Monday Thursday slate for our James 47. Here's his lineup. He has Russell Wilson at the quarterback position, which I think is a great play. Uh, love Wilson uh, against a team like Detroit at home because Detroit is really going to funnel towards the pass. I thought Wilson was uh, clearly the number one overall option as most of the tournament did. He was 66.2% owned. Uh, didn't end up being the number one quarterback overall. I think Hasselback did pass him, but there's so much uncertainty with who is going to start at the Colts. Uh, for the Colts that weekend, so uh, I think Wilson made a lot of sense. Uh, didn't have a huge game. The two fumbles were absolutely killer, and there's some interesting part about this lineup, which we'll talk about here in a second. Uh, but Wilson did did uh, do pretty well, 287 yards passing and a, a long TD to Doug Baldwin. Uh, Arian Foster, love this pick. Uh, Arian Foster is going to be an elite running back going forward. Thought he had an excellent game here against Indy. He's a, a pass-catching back, and he is uh, more than capable of playing uh, – any type of game flow. He's always going to be in the game, which is great. Uh, and the nine catches really paid dividends here for the 77 yards. That, that really boosted his score on a point per reception basis, which DraftKings is. Frank Gore, I think, is a, a pretty nice play here. Two yards away from the bonus, which is always uh, one of the more frustrating things for me. I'm always rooting for my guys to just get over the bonus. When they don't get there, it's, it's super frustrating. But uh, Frank Gore here with a really nice game in the touchdown uh, at a cheap price. who's one of the more viable running backs in this slate. Uh, Doug Baldwin. This is a guy that uh, was pretty heavily owned. I thought he was the clear-cut number one option outside of Jimmy Graham for Russell Wilson. Uh, this guy did not go. R. James did not go with Jimmy Graham, so I thought it was smart to, to pair Wilson with Baldwin. Uh, great game from Baldwin in terms of the long touchdown. Uh, obviously didn't have a huge game, which you're looking for, but uh, the receivers really didn't have huge games outside of the guys that this that uh, R. James took. Andre Johnson. Now, here is the contrarian pick that won it all for him. Only 6.9% owned. Uh, I did not love Andre Johnson. He's coming off two catchless games, but this is the kind of pick that you have to make in a qualifier in a two-game slate. You know that not many people are going to be on him with recency bias. Uh, the one thing that I did like about him is he had Narrative Street working for him. Going back to Houston, you know Indianapolis wants to get him involved, and I'm sure he had a little extra motivation for this game. So he ended up with six catches, two touchdowns. He was the key to this slate, and kudos to R. James 47 for taking Andre Johnson. Calvin Johnson, uh, not a great game. He was tough to take, 64.6% uh, .6 owned. Uh, I mean, obviously, you, it was tough to kind of spend the full salary without taking someone like Calvin in this slate. Uh, tough to take him in Seattle is what I was going to say. Uh, but, you know, he, he still had a high ceiling relative to a lot of the guys in the slate. Not a great game, not a bad game. Seven catches, 56 yards, uh, and the fumble. But uh, a nice spot here for Calvin uh, going forward because he hasn't had these big games that we're used to seeing. So I think Calvin Johnson's kind of a buy low candidate uh, going forward here in Daily Fantasy on DraftKings. Uh, tight end Colby Fleener, cheap play. Uh, thought he had some upside for sure. Definitely some chemistry with Hasselback the first week they played in week four. Week five didn't do much, two catches, nine yards. Uh, definitely a valuable play. Uh, if you're not going to go Jimmy Graham in the slate, I thought this was the play. And uh, it didn't work out for R. James, uh, you know, in terms of his performance. But luckily he had everyone else that you needed uh, to win this slate. DeAndre Hopkins, this guy is an absolute monster on DraftKings. 83% owned. Uh, the other 17% were trying to get too cute. Had to play DeAndre Hopkins in this in, in this slate, in my opinion. Uh, guy is just getting a ridiculous amount of targets. Didn't even score a touchdown. Was still the highest scoring player on the slate. 11 catches, which is just so huge for PPR. And uh, Hopkins ended up having a great game, 169 yards. He's a guy that's going to be heavily targeted all year and a guy I think makes sense to put in your lineups in cash games, tournaments, whatever, any single week because of the volume he's getting. Now, here's the differentiator. We talked about Andre Johnson. Here's the other one, Lions defense. This was huge. Uh, everyone was on Seattle in this tournament, uh, and pivoting to the Lions defense was a contrarian play. Interesting that there's some negative correlation with Russell Wilson and Doug Baldwin as your quarterback and receiver, but... You kind of have to do some of that in these two game slates. So uh, kudos to him on the Lions defense. That was the contrarian play. I think that there is really a lot more merit to Seattle's defense, but the Lions came through in the clutch with a couple big plays and all those sacks really made up for it. So big kudos to R. James on taking this down and uh, congrats again. Hopefully uh, R. James has a fun and fruitful uh, time with this uh, championship here on DraftKings. Now let's go to the millionaire maker, someone who took home all the cheese on week five. 
Um, Cienti 15, I hope I pronounced that right, uh, with a monster score, 255.62 points. Great overall team. Love the roster construction here. Uh, there was one thing that I was a little unsure of, which I'll talk about, but uh, the rest of the team was just absolutely killer. So Sam Bradford as the quarterback. Uh, nice play here. Could have had an even bigger game, honestly, except they ran in their touchdowns. Um, uh, but Bradford had a, a nice game against New Orleans. I think we're going to see Bradford really start to turn it around here. Uh, one thing I liked about the pick with Bradford is New Orleans is actually sneaky good against the run, so you, they're easier to pass against, which is why Bradford was a great play. Justin Forsett, I think, is an elite play on this slate, only 5,800. Loved, loved, loved Justin Forsett this week. Going against Cleveland has been absolutely atrocious against the run. And one other thing that was really enticing for me about Justin Forsett was he was going to catch the ball a lot here. Baltimore is depleted at the receiver position, and Flacco likes to go to Forsett on those checkdowns. Four catches for 49 yards is an extra bonus there uh, with Forsett. Uh, and he would have had an even bigger game if he wouldn't have gotten hurt at the end of the game. Devontae Freeman, uh, what can we say about this guy? I mean, don't need really an ex explanation on why he was chosen. Uh, he's 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 the guy that uh, is just absolutely crushing. You've had to have him uh, if you want uh, to win these tournaments uh, to start to start the year. The last three weeks, he's been uh, just absolutely huge, and uh, you know another huge game with 153 rushing yards, a touchdown, seven catches. I mean, the guy is just getting a ton of touches overall. So. Uh, that's a great play there. 21% owned. Uh, still not as heavily owned as I thought he would be this week. Julian Edelman. Uh, a great play here. This is a target monster. Loved all the Patriots here against Dallas. Uh, had a great 59-yard touchdown. I think that you want to take Julian Edelman pretty much every single week when his price stays like this. He's a PPR monster. He's Tom Brady's number one option outside of Rob Gronkowski, and he gets peppered with targets. So this is a great volume play, and I think he's an elite guy going forward. Allen Robinson, love this play. This is a guy I personally had a lot of exposure to. Uh, he's the number one option in Jacksonville, and they're going to be throwing a lot. And Blake Bortles throws the ball down the field. Allen Robinson has a huge, huge, huge upside because he is a, a big, uh, you know, overall t yards per catch kind of guy. He's getting targeted down the field, and uh, he had two nice touchdowns here with seven catches. So big game from Allen Robinson against Tampa Bay. Emmanuel Sanders, this was a great play. Uh, Emmanuel Sanders is uh, the, the second guy behind Demarius Thomas, but he's seeing more targets recently. Nine catches, 111 yards, over 100, uh, over 100 for the bonus. Uh, I liked him here a lot against Oakland. Uh, a lot more people focused on Demarius Thomas. Demarius Thomas also had the neck injury coming in, making Emmanuel Sanders even more enticing. So great pick here. Love that call. Um, and I, I think that that worked out pretty well. Antonio Gates, uh, another play that I really liked here. Uh, he's a guy that uh, needed a one touchdown to get to 100, so I love the narrative street. I thought that he would definitely get in the end zone and uh, really had that huge week uh, in terms of uh, the touchdowns here. So I loved Antonio Gates. I think he's a great play going forward. I think that uh, he's a guy that you want to continue to get exposure to. Uh, he's a guy that is going to be Philip Rivers' number one target in the red zone, as we saw here with the two touchdowns. So I think you have to consider him going forward coming off the suspension. Doug Martin, here's the highest scoring running back on the week. Went absolutely ham. Could have had even more more opportunity in the red zone. Uh, did get three touchdowns, uh, but had a, a, another opportunity potentially to get a, a third one there for rushing. Uh, caught the receiving touchdown, which was great. Uh, just a monster play against Jacksonville. I think a lot of people are going to be targeting guys against Jacksonville, which makes sense. I'm more of a fan of targeting Jacksonville through the pass in general, but with game flow, if teams get up, they're going to continue to pound the rock. Doug Martin, the muscle hamster, is back and having a great year so far, especially this last week. Uh, a guy that you certainly want to consider in good matchups here. And then finally, the Packers defense. Uh, love taking guys against Nick Foles. And I think the reason the Packers were so enticing this week uh, where they were at, at home, uh, which is something I'm always looking for in a defense. Uh, Nick Foles is turnover prone, and they got a bunch of sacks, interceptions. They had the defensive touchdown. Uh, so the Packers uh, were the number one overall scoring defense. And at only 6.3% owned, uh, that was a great play. So we'll be doing another lineup review next week here, guys. Make sure to subscribe and like DKTV. Uh, check us out on the playbook for content all the time. We're helping you as much as we can, and we love to see you guys at the top of the leaderboard. So good luck here in week six, and we'll check back on Tuesday of next week with another lineup review.